Hi everyone. How is everybody today? All right. So um, today I got asked a really great question and of course I want to answer it because I feel that it is true of everybody, um, you know, at least the ones that haven't reached that point in their awareness. So this point in their awareness. Um, so one of the really great questions that I was asked today was how do you keep from being triggered? How do you keep from um, allowing other people to get under your skin? And, and the answer is you don't. You don't. It's designed that way. It is designed that way. Now, why would I say this? Well, because if it got under your skin, it means there is something in your life that is not resolved and your, and your memories are being triggered on all levels and that's why you're feeling them. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few examples so you guys can understand where I'm coming from. I'll start with John and I. John and I have known each other for, um, it will be a couple, almost two years in January, um, and best friends for about seven. So nine years we've known each other, and in those nine years we have had, I can count on my hand how many arguments we've ever had. Okay, less than five. Now, when we had them, were they doozies? Yes. Yes, but they weren't doozies because of what he said or what I said, okay? Yeah. All right, it's not that. It's that I had to go in and say, I had to go in and look at myself and say, how did I cause this? What scripts in my life were playing that caused these things? So for example, if he's ever, he's not disrespectful to me because I don't play that. But let's just say that he was. Okay? Let's just pretend that he was. So if he was, um, where in my life have I done that to others? Have I been disrespectful to my daughter? Have I been disrespectful to the teachers in my life? Have I been disrespectful to my mother? Where in my life have I acted like this that I am now in time on the receiving end of the things that I've done? So for me so far? Okay, that's one example. Now I'll give you another one. Because we're always in situations we don't, sometimes we don't know how we got there. So I will explain. Here's another situation. I've been on the receiving end of discrimination. Okay? Now, um, it felt horrible. It did. I don't like it. And, and the thing is, it's like, I'm one of those people that see equality in people, and I've never, dis I don't do that. I don't discriminate, okay? I don't care if you're black, white, Asian, Asian. I don't care what you are. I don't care if you're gay. I don't care if you're a transvestite. Equal. Equally deserving of respect. Equally deserving of love. I have, I'm so sorry, I will never drop down to that level, okay? So how did I end up on the receiving end of that? Well, it's very simple. I was raised in a, in a family of, um, I was born in a generation where I had great uncles and great aunts that were just, they were like that, in ignorance. In ignorance, because those were my incarnations too. They're only separated by time. Degrees in time, they're all existing simultaneously. So, of course I'm going to be on the receiving end. But I wasn't consciously aware of what they were doing, Right? So I wasn't aware of how that happened, but it did, okay? Now, if I'm not willing to face that, forgive those things, and let it go, it will continue to play. But you have to be willing to look at yourself. You have to be willing to look at yourself. See, you have to love yourself enough to dive deep enough into yourself to understand where the darkness is coming from. This is how the mirror is important. It's not about it's not about feeling bad. It's about understanding why you feel bad. Because there's no other way to transmute it. You guys with me so far? All right. So <laughs> um, if you can learn this and and do this every single time, it gets easier and easier. It requires an, a great amount of self-discipline. And I'm not going to lie, there are times that I will put someone in their place if I have to. And I'll shut them up and I'll walk away. I know I've been arguing with myself. 
I'm arguing with an imaginary incarnation or past incarnation that must play the role of my own karma. Now, you don't have to believe in karma, but I already know we have a law of cause and effect, and therefore, universally, it is true. You don't have to accept it, but that's what is. That's what is. And sometimes it's our ancestral memories that are playing and we don't realize. Right? All right. So um, another practice that I have and the reason that I wanted to come on and say this is that I have modified emotional freedom technique tapping. And I have developed a way that I prefer to get at the root cause of our issues. Okay? Okay. Because, and I'll give you an example. Um, have you ever tried the law of attraction and um, tried to say manifest something like money? Okay. And you tried and you said these affirmations to yourself over and over again. And every day you hope for a change and something di- and it didn't happen. Okay. And after a while, what happens is. You sit there and you say, I'm the richest person in the world. I'm the richest person in the world. I'm the richest person in the world. And then the part of you that kicks in that is sensory oriented will be like, (laughs) yeah, right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is that not what happens? Right? Okay. So it is the deep rooted beliefs that require a different approach. Okay, and that approach is what I call root cause tapping. And it's something I do in silence because in silence, you are least resistant to the words you are saying. And that way, the memories are allowed to flood. So um, everyone um, that is aware of tapping, that doesn't know what tapping is, let me explain. Um, You are tapping on your meridians. Like, hey, we can do this right now. We're tapping on our meridians. We can do it one hand. We can do it two hands. We can do it in any order. It doesn't matter because right now you're not focused on anything else except trying to figure out what caused these issues. And you can tap in any order. That part is not important. Just do what feels good. You know, even when you're driving and you get stressed out, I'll, I'll do one of these. You know, like somebody cuts me off. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> The important part here is then what happens is once you do this and it feels good enough, you sit in silence for a little while and memories will come and they will flood up, you know, and and all of a sudden things that will flash across your mind will astound you because if you looked away from something and you forgot that it was there, oh, it never goes away. (laughs) until you forgive it so if you looked away from this (laughs) it will play it will play it's always playing and other people will mirror it back to you always there's no escaping this reflective self here we descend into ourselves to better understand ourselves and we transmute our own darkness for our own development but we bring that darkness and that awareness into us is it imaginary sure because at the end of the day a mortal life is nothing but a dream and until you awaken from that phase of sleep and, and sleep and wake, sleep and wake, which you guys call life and death, you know, you'll continue to do this and simultaneously be everywhere at once. And you'll, you'll always think you're born and you'll always think you're dying. But all that you did is fall asleep and wake up. Waking up is death. Until you are eternally awakened, in which case... It's a very different scenario. Now you see the world completely different. You understand that you are the source of your reality. If you can own this, if you can own what's happening to you, it is a very different sort of story because now you have a compassion for some stranger that acted funny and you can let it go. Now you don't have to go touch them. You don't have to go after them. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You have only to work on yourself and figure out why this happened. Okay. Does it hurt? Sure it does. Sure it does. But that's only because you're going to look and see where have I done this to others? Or have my ancestors done this? And you release them. Because the saddest thing in the world is to still be under the control of people that have already passed on. Okay. But this is where your peace comes from. 
This is where the tranquility comes from. This is where you become less reactive and more responsive. This is where you always have to be willing to look at yourself. And you got to do it with a lot of love and a lot of compassion and a lot of understanding as you develop these things. Okay, but that's what the mirror means to me. It's the ownership of my being the source, okay? And that mirror is going on in my brain. There's dozens of lives going on simultaneously on 3D Earth. And all of those simultaneous incarnations are our own thoughts, our own beliefs reflected back in the form of people, places, and things. That's the way it is, okay? But if, if you guys want to know why John and I don't argue... Why, you know, I mean, it's rare when we do, you know, I mean, come on, nine years, less than five fights, maybe three, four major, major ones. <laughs> and that's his friends. <laughs> One is a couple. One major argument. Okay. And that was a very painful argument, not because of what he said, because, oh, yeah, it was bad what he said, but that's not, that's not what I'm saying. What was painful was having to face myself and having to understand where it came from. How did this happen in my reality? Okay? Where have I done this to other people? And so in doing that examination, if I look at these things and I forgive myself and I forgive those actions, I'm released. And see, this is a difference right now because people are talking about ascension symptoms still. We've already ascended. And those people that are still being triggered or anchored is because they have things they have not addressed. So you've got to love yourself to the degree that you're willing to do this, this inner work. This inner work is the most important thing you can ever do because everything right now is coming up. It's in your face and it's coming up. It's in your face and it's coming up. So, for example, I met a woman um, online that I tried to tell her about forgiveness and she like blasted me because she needed to justify her anger. She totally needed to justify her anger. She even felt sorry for me. And <laughs> I, I had to think about that. Like, why is she appearing in my life? And then I thought about it. Well, for 38 years of my life, I did exactly that. And that reflection still exists or I wouldn't have seen her. So she did me a huge favor in, in letting me know. So what did I do that morning? And, the, and for the next few days, I tapped that out. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I got to heal that because if I can heal that, that reflection will not affect 8 billion people. And 8 billion people will not feel that energy. Self-mastery. Know you're the universe. Be willing to look at yourself. And then amp up that self-love. Amp up that compassion. Amp up that willingness to heal. Amp up that willingness to forgive. Because the only person you're forgiving is yourself. No matter how many incarnations ago it was. Okay? So, in all honesty, I descended into my family's drama in some really painful stuff. And I had a really crappy childhood. Teen years grew up even angrier. I justified my anger and I'd look away and I'd cut people off. Absolutely cut people off because I don't do suffering. Mm -mm. I don't do suffering. I'm allergic. But what I mean by that is if it got under my skin now, it's because now I have the sense of maturity to look back and see what I have done to cause this to myself. And if you don't have that willingness to do that, you're burying your head in the sand and you cannot avoid yourself at this point because we've already ascended. And so all the pains, all the depressions, all the things you refuse to look at, they're in your face and they're causing people anxiety and they're causing people uh, severe depressions. And, and, and right now, right now, my willingness to do this, the people that are closest to me are feeling really good right now. I, I watched a video of my friend that she made and she's like, I'm the happiest I've ever been and I've suffered from depression my whole life. You know how good that felt to watch that? But that's because I'm doing the inner work and I'm doing the inner work for everyone in the universe. 
Not just myself, because everyone in the universe is myself. It's, it's my creation. This is my reality in which I do. And we all have this. We all are descending into ourselves and transmuting our darkness. Descending into ourselves and transmuting our darkness for our own evolvement. Does it take ownership? Hell yes. Can it be painful? Hell yes. Does it, do you have to continue to suffer and continue to see it reflected back in your, in your life? No. No. Not when it's addressed at the root. And that's what we're being asked to do in order to transcend. That's what we're being asked to do if we're going to go to the fifth dimension. That's what we're being asked to do if we're going to consciously move physically into 5D or our inner world or whatever you want to call it. I call it heaven on earth. Because that to me is what it is. It is the awareness of my whole self. The awareness of knowing the Alpha and Omega includes me too. That's what it's going to take, guys. You know, and this isn't, this isn't a bad thing if you're willing to love yourself enough to face everything. Okay? Now, I can promise you a few things. If you do this, the anxiety will go away. The depression will go away. The things that are being brought up, the treatment, and the arguments, whatever comes up in your life. You know, the angry customer on the other end, you know, <laughs> of the phone. <laughs> whatever way that it is mirrored back to you. Because in truth, every person that appears to you is ascended because they are a reflection of yourself. And when you own that ascension in yourself, you own it in everybody else. So, you know, I say certain things, but I'm always saying it inclusive. I say we, 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 our, 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 universe, universe, universe is one thing. One thing, I don't separate it, okay? Now, um, if, if you guys have the courage to do this, your ascension process will be easy. See, I knew before I incarnated, if I descended into my own hell that I made were all the places where I messed up before as my other ancient lives because I didn't know because I was in ignorance of not knowing that I was everybody on earth at the time of that time and that I was really on the receiving end of my own actions, that I acted in ignorance. But this incarnation, I know better. This incarnation, I know. And when I look in the mirror now, I feel nothing but love. Love because I understand the grand design. I understand how we are made. I understand how reality is made. Now, you can take this or leave it with a grain of salt. But I promise you... I'm, three, I'm going on three years of constant joy. I'm going on three years of, you know, most of the time, I am happy. Okay? Other times, I'm very peaceful. Other times, I'm grateful. Notice that I'm always on the higher end of the emotional scale. Do I deserve to be on the higher end of the emotional scale? Yes, because I face myself. I face my demons. I face what was going on. And then I love those freaking demons to death. Until they were no more. And if I still encounter another one, I have enough practice facing myself and looking in the mirror and saying, okay, how did I get here now? Who or what in my life caused this? and I take ownership of it, I'm free. I'm free. That's what my talk is about today. If you guys can do this, you can join the rest of me and my friends who are totally blissed out and totally happy enjoying the new energies. It's a choice, guys. It's a choice. It takes a deep, deep, deep level of self-love a huge amount of self-love to match that which God is to us. And if you start magnifying that out, people will be drawn to your understanding. 
people will look to you because they need to understand they need to find the peace they need to understand this process because people are tired of suffering and it's designed that way it is totally totally designed that way you do reach this level it is possible and i know some people do not believe me but i'm not the only one living this type of joy i'm not the only one living this type of freedom dare to dive into yourself love yourself that much love yourself that much because that is the template from which you will be on the receiving end that is the receiving end you want to be on it's completely opposite direction of where I was when I was externally unaware fighting the external circumstances opposite extreme now I'm on the inside looking out on the inside owning what is happening on the inside viewing it differently and so now I have compassion do I have to put up with bad behavior no I just cut you off <laughs> but then I'm gonna go in in my mind and I'm gonna thank them for showing me what was going on inside me I'm gonna cut up that little contract all in my mind okay thank you for your service I really appreciate you. All in my mind, I never touch them, and I walk away. And then I work on healing myself through tapping or through whatever methods. There's a billion methods. There's not just one. But I find root cause tapping very effective. You guys want to, to know this piece. You guys want to know what it's like to be on the receiving end of a loving relationship all 100% of the time, be that love for yourself and for everyone that you meet. That means forgiveness in totality for yourself as well. That's it. That's it. That's how you, <laughs> that's how you have... A smile that people are drawn to. That's how you get the warmth that people, you become magnetic. You have magnetism <laughs> that people want to touch and be around and want to listen to. Yeah, of course they do. Because you've achieved what they want. Or someone else shows you the same thing and then you look at them and you and you smile because you're like, yes, we did this together. <laughs> but either way, it's an ownership thing. And we're always, always on the receiving end. Always. So if you bury yourself in the in the sand and you bury that head in there and you refuse to look at yourself, the issues are gonna continue to come. Poverty, uh, lack, abuse, whatever. It's all the same thing. Refusal to look at your wounds. And they're going to be in your face. The only way out is in, guys. The only way out is in. That's my talk for today. You know, um, I hope it helps because I know that there's a lot of people suffering. You know, and uh, I just want to say, if you like this video, if it helped you understand, if it helps you transcend, if you know people that are kind of suffering through ascension, share it if you think it'll help. Absolutely. Because all I want to do is help anyone and everyone that is my past perception that I created. Because that really is what happens. Thanks, guys. <laughs>